Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Progressive and we're going to be talking about whether or not you can damage your car by running out of fuel. Now a lot of people will claim you know you shouldn't run out of fuel aside from the obvious reasons of you know you're going to be stranded somewhere uh, and it's obviously not safe to just have your engine shut off in the middle of the road uh, that you could actually cause some damage to some of the components in your car. So in this video we're going to be discussing you know what will actually happen, some of the truths behind uh, these claims, whether or not you would actually damage specific components. So we're going to be talking about fuel pumps, we're going to be talking about catalytic converters, and we're going to be talking about your engine as a whole and whether or not you could damage it by running low on fuel or running out of fuel. Now what actually happens when you run out of fuel? And so in this case, you know, an engine needs four things in order to operate. It needs fuel, it needs a spark, it needs compression, and it needs some oxygen. In this case, you know, the air around us will do. And so if you take away any one of those four things for this gasoline engine, it's not going to work. And so in this case, we're taking away fuel from the equation. There's no longer going to be combustion occurring. And so the engine can no longer function and it shuts off. Now our first question is, will running low on fuel or running out of fuel damage our fuel pump? And so essentially how this works, you have a fuel pump module. This is sitting within your fuel tank. So this is gonna be sitting in your fuel tank vertically. You're going to have your fuel pump located within this. And then there's going to be a suction filter attached to the bottom of this fuel pump so that you don't pull in any debris into the filter. And so you're gonna have that suction filter. The fuel then moves within the fuel pump itself, travels through a fuel filter, and then is sent to the front of your car where it's injected through your fuel injectors into the intake manifold. Now the first line of defense for your fuel pump is that suction filter. And so that's gonna make sure no debris actually gets caught within the fuel pump itself. Now of course the level of fuel that you have in your tank isn't really gonna change whether or not there's debris within your tank. Uh, so you need that suction filter to make sure your fuel pump doesn't suck up uh, that actual debris. Now the one thing that can happen is if that suction filter starts to get all clogged up with all the debris within your tank, if there is for some reason a large amount of debris in there, then it can cause a restriction on that suction filter, meaning your fuel pump is going to have to work harder in order to pull fuel through it. Now let's say, for example, your car is just sitting there stationary. It's about out of fuel and it's just sitting there idling. The car is not actually moving. And so your fuel pump, it's located, it's pulling from the very bottom of that fuel tank, trying to get the remaining fuel out of it. Everything's just nice and level. And so you start to eventually run out of fuel. You run out completely and it's passing that fuel through it. There's no longer enough fuel left. And so it starts to suck up air up through the fuel pump. Now fuel pumps are designed so that pulling fuel through them actually cools them and lubricates them. That fuel helps to cool the pump as it travels through it. And so of course if you're just pulling air through it, you're not going to be cooling this pump as well and so it's going to start to get warm. Now in the case of just sitting there idling and running out, it's obviously going to be a very short duration. So the risk of you know actually causing harm to this is very low because the amount of time it's just going to be sitting there pulling air through it is very short because once this pump is starting to push air through it, it means you're not going to be sending fuel to your injectors, which means your engine's going to shut off. So everything's going to shut off. So let's change up the scenario. Let's say now you're actually driving around and you're very low on fuel. So if you're driving around and you're actually aggressively braking, aggressively accelerating or cornering, this fuel is designed to, you know, obviously pick up fuel from the bottom of the tank. The fuel pump is designed so that it's pulling that fuel from the bottom of the tank. And there's going to be baffles within there in order to, you know, maximize uh, the probability that it's sucking up fuel and not air. So it wants to make sure that that fuel that goes down to the bottom of the tank it actually does get sucked up. But as you're moving around, uh, you know, that fuel is going to be sloshing around within the tank. And so that can mean at those very low fuel levels, you could be, you know, pulling in more air than you would like through this fuel pump. Now, if you do this once or twice, is it going to cause harm to your fuel pump just because it had a little bit of air go through it? No, but if you're continuously running your car at a very low amount of fuel, that means the likelihood that this thing is getting overheated every now and then is going to increase. So the likelihood that you're going to have your fuel pump fail is going to increase simply because it's spending more time ingesting air rather than fuel. And honestly, these things are designed to last quite a long time. It's not uncommon for them to last the life of the car. You know, they're very reliable parts when they're just purely pulling fuel through them, uh, but they're certainly not designed to have air going through them and they will start to get warm if they're just pulling air through them, which is the case when you're very low on fuel and that fuel is sloshing around. 
Now, generally speaking, your owner's manual will warn you about this if your car is prone to having the fuel pump damaged uh, through a very low fuel level. So you may look in your owner's manual and see if it says anything about whether or not, you know, running at that level uh, is going to cause any damage. So what about your engine itself? Could you actually cause some damage to your engine simply by running low on fuel? And so this kind of gets into, you know, some unique scenarios. So one thing that could happen, obviously, as you start to run out of fuel, and you don't have fuel going into you know, one cylinder, but it does go into another cylinder, you're gonna start to have misfiring. And so misfiring simply meaning you don't have combustion occur within that cylinder. And that could cause damage, uh, but it's gonna be a bit rare that it would actually cause any damage. What could really be a significant risk is if you were to be running your car hard while it's very low on fuel. So let's say you're running your car very hard, wide open throttle, you know, high RPM, and this fuel pump isn't getting enough fuel going through it. So now your computer is telling your engine to run at an air fuel ratio, let's say 11 to one, 12 to one, uh, but your fuel pump isn't able to deliver that much fuel. And so instead of 11 or 12 to one air fuel ratio, perhaps you're at 14 to one or a little bit higher. And then because you're running less rich, you're going to be running much hotter. And that's where you could start to run into problems like knock, where your engine is specifically choosing an air fuel ratio in order to prevent damage from occurring and then you don't actually have the fuel to do it and so in that scenario if you have knock you could have detrimental uh, damage occur to your engine itself simply because you don't have enough fuel going in but again you know you can avoid this if you're very low on fuel simply don't run your car hard I mean I think that's an obvious thing to do you're gonna have uh, that fuel sloshing around if you're running it hard and you're gonna have an increased likelihood of not getting the ideal amount of fuel into the cylinders uh, when you most need it all right, now let's get into catalytic converters because this is something that some people will say, you know, if you run low on fuel, you're gonna damage your catalytic converter. And catalytic converters are pretty robust as is. I mean, they're dealing with an engine that's going through quite a range of air-fuel ratios, and they're dealing with quite a range of exhaust temperatures. Uh, one thing that is bad for catalytic converters is just when pure hydrocarbons are flowing through it. So if you just have excess fuel, flowing through that catalytic converter. The converter is designed to combust that fuel, to react with that fuel, and so you can heat it up quite quickly if you have pure fuel going through it, which isn't ideal, it will overheat. And so in the case of having a misfire that is spark related, uh, if your spark doesn't fire, that means all of that fuel that's within your cylinder is now going through your catalytic converter. And that's terrible for it. You don't wanna have a bunch of fuel going through your catalytic converter. However, in the case of having a misfire because you don't have enough fuel, obviously that means less fuel will be going through your catalytic converter. So, you know, if you're running too lean that you don't have combustion occur, uh, but you still have fuel going through there, yes, that is an example of where you're gonna be sending some fuel through the catalytic converter uh, and it could cause damage through overheating it, but you're not injecting that much fuel because you don't have that much fuel and it's not going to last very long because you don't have much fuel. So the risk is there, yes, in that you could send lean air fuel mixtures through that maybe don't combust and work their way through the catalytic converter and heat it up, uh, but the risk is low because the duration won't be that long and it's also not going to be that much fuel going through it. So overall answering the question is running low on fuel or running out of fuel going to damage your car and it's something that you know if it only happens once or twice in the lifetime of owning your vehicle the probability of causing damage is very low. Uh, that said if it's something where you're commonly running your fuel tank very low commonly running with not that much fuel in it then you're increasing the probability that you could have damage occur to certain components. And so obviously that's not ideal to do. Does it mean that you can't get away with it or that you can get away with it? It could go either way. Uh, a good thing to do for sure is certainly to just look in your owner's manual and see what your car recommends about it, whether or not you know running low is going to cause a risk for your specific vehicle. Overall, it's not something you want to do, something you would like to try to avoid uh, as much as possible. So a huge thank you to Progressive for partnering on the video and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.